This video is going over classification of matter into elements, compounds, and mixtures. To start, we need to clarify what matter is. Matter is anything that takes up space or has volume and has mass. An example of something that is not matter is energy. Energy is not matter. We're going to talk about two types of pure substances. Pure substances have uniform, unchanging composition, and the two examples we'll talk about are elements and compounds. And those are both considered pure substances. So the first type of pure substances is elements. Elements are composed of atoms, and you can find them on the periodic table of elements. Elements cannot be broken down into simpler substances by physical or by chemical means. And some examples you can see over here is copper, like in copper wire, and aluminum, which is in aluminum foil. The second type of pure substances we'll talk about are compounds. Compounds are a chemical combination of two or more different elements in a fixed ratio. So you can put in right there, that's supposed to say fixed ratio. Compounds can be broken down into simpler substances, but only by chemical means. So an example of how they can be broken down by chemical means is through electrolysis or through a chemical reaction. Compounds have properties that are often different from those of the individual elements that make it up. So for example, if you think about water, good old H2O, it's very different from hydrogen by itself and oxygen by itself, which are both gases. Another example of how properties can be different from the compound and the individual elements that make it up is table salt, like you see up here. It's sodium and chlorine, Na and Cl, put together. Sodium is actually a metal, and chlorine is a very toxic gas. But when they're together, they're table salt. A couple of elements that are really important for you to know of are the diatomic elements, and those are hydrogen, oxygen, chlorine, nitrogen, fluorine, bromine, and iodine. And the reason they're called diatomic is because they exist in nature together as twins. So you never have just one hydrogen. It's always H2, two hydrogens. The same thing is true of all of those other diatomic elements. Here's one more example of a compound. So you have carbon in green and oxygen in red, and those can come together to make carbon monoxide, or if you have one carbon and two oxygens, that makes carbon dioxide. And if you know anything about carbon monoxide, it's poisonous, and carbon dioxide is totally fine. That's what we breathe out, and it's all in the air around us. All right, I'm going to do a quick little learning check. So in your notes, go ahead and identify each of these as an element or a compound, and then you'll go over the answers with your teacher. Now we're getting away from things that are pure substances, and we call those things mixtures. So mixtures are two or more substances that can be physically separated. And there's two different kinds of mixtures we'll talk about. There's homogeneous mixtures, and there's heterogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous means you can't see the different parts in the mixture, and they're also sometimes called solutions. So examples of homogeneous mixtures are Kool-Aid, vinegar, Coke, and alcohol. Pretty much anything where you can't see the different parts, that's going to be a homogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous mixtures are the opposite. They're mixtures where you can see the individual parts. They're easily distinguished, and they're often unevenly mixed. So some examples of heterogeneous mixtures are trail mix, concrete, and pizza. Some ways that you could separate mixtures by physical means are these four you see on this slide. Distillation, which is separating two or more liquids with different boiling points. Chromatography, which is separating pure liquids or solutions or compounds. Filtration, which is to separate solids and liquids, like with a filter. And crystallization, which is separating by formation of pure solid crystals from a solution that previously had substances dissolved in it. Okay, here's another little learning check. So look at these three pictures and try to figure out which one represents element, compound, and mixture. And then check your answers with your teacher. 
last learning check, you're going to look at these and combine everything we've talked about so far. So you're going to say for each of these if it's an element, a compound, a homogeneous mixture, or a heterogeneous mixture. And of course, check your answers with your teacher.